How would you like to save 50% every time you buy a car? You can. It's a simple matter of when to say yes and when to say no. Buying a car is a game between the buyer and the seller. However, the stakes are very high. The more knowledge you have, the less you will always pay. Nowhere during your life will you be taken more often and for more money than when you buy a new car. The deceptions are so hidden and so lucrative for the dealers that billions are wasted yearly by all the car buyers who love to brag to their friends about what a great deal they've got. Even automobile salesmen are often unaware of the incredible front end and back end loads that make car dealership owners some of the wealthiest members of your community. Fact, no one has ever gotten a good deal on a new car except the dealer. Once we explore what goes on behind the scenes, you will be shocked and maybe even fighting mad to see how much money you've already lost or would have lost without these strategies. There are over 10 ways that you can get ripped off for big dollars when buying a new car. We'll look at each in detail. These fall into two categories, front end ripoffs. Front end means they occur as you buy the car and back end ripoffs that occur when you finance the car. Let's go through the list first. Front end ripoffs include, number one, the dealer's extra price sticker. Number two, the inflated delivery charge. Number three, the inflated setup and preparation charge. Number four, the overpriced options package. And number five, the trade-in tricks. Back end load ripoffs include, number one, credit life insurance. Number two, credit disability insurance. Number three, inflated interest charges. Number four, the extended warranty plan. Number five, the required dealership periodic maintenance. Number six, the low, low interest scam. Let's take a look at why it's so important to understand how these work. New cars are normally purchased from authorized dealers who own franchises from the manufacturers. The dealer's markup, when you include the options, is about 18 to 25 percent. The more expensive the car, the greater the dealer profit. Here's the problem. Because of the dealer markup, a new car depreciates by about 20% the minute you drive it off the lot. Buy a $14,000 new car, drive it home, and it's immediately a used car worth as little as $11,000. During the first year, the car depreciates another 10% and an additional 20% the second year. After two years, your new dream car has lost 50% of its value. Strategy. Buy a two-year-old car instead of a new one. The best value in a car is one that's two years old and in good condition. Spend $50 to $100 to have a good mechanic check every system in the car before you buy it. And deduct the cost of everything that needs repairing from the seller's lowest price. Often, people buy new cars because they like that new car smell. If you do, you can have it simply by spending $1.69 at your local auto parts store for a spray can of, you guessed it, new car smell. Many dealers use advertising gimmicks to increase their sales. One popular technique it has been around forever is called bait and switch. The dealer will run a fantastic bargain day advertisement that will lure you into the showroom. But when you get there, you're told that the car cars that were being sold at the bargain prices are already gone, sold before you arrived. But since you're already there, they attempt to sell you a similar car only without the bargain price. We have a new service at the Gibbons organization to help you buy a new car at the lowest price if you just can't resist, even after what I've said. The service is called Carputer. And what you do is you visit a dealer or showroom pick out the car you want with all the options and by calling the toll-free number at Carputer you can get a report on any car with any options as to what the dealer paid and the lowest possible price you could get that car for anywhere. It's a great investment. Each report costs twenty dollars. So by phoning 1-800-221-4001 1-800-221-4001, you can get a report on any car you're interested in listing everything you need to know. Now, if you can't 
find a car at the recommended price, which is just slightly above cost, you can, using that same number, buy the car at that suggested price through the buying service. All of that only costs $20. The report and suggested price that you'll get through Carputer is not probably going to be what you'll get if you ask the dealer to see the invoice. Most buyers have become smart enough to ask the dealer to show you an invoice, but don't rely on it. Dealers now often create phony invoices that look real, but were probably prepared by the dealer's secretary. Usually, these phony invoices contain an extra $400 markup over the real invoice. Don't be fooled by what appears to be the dealer selling a car at a loss. No dealer will sell his car at a true loss. One item to check when buying a used car is the odometer. If the odometer rows are uneven, it's a sign of tampering and the car should not be purchased. Another gimmick being used by car dealers today to lure you into the showroom is what we call raise the price, drop the interest. The automobile business has been on a roller coaster ride for many years. One month sales are up, the next dealers' lots are full of unsold inventory. Because of the huge fixed costs of labor and equipment, the automakers cannot just close down as they once did when demand is light and then call everybody back to work when people start buying again. That means manufacturers and dealers have to resort to unusual methods to sell more cars when few people are buying. The gimmick that is developed from the plague of too much inventory is to offer a big rebate or super low interest rate with every purchase of a new car. The average interest rate on a new car loan is about 12%. Buy now, the TV ads scream, and your rate will be cut to 5% or maybe even 2.9%. Chrysler, in early in 1989, even offered the 0% loan. What a deal, you're thinking. Their loss is my gain. The truth is that the car companies are not losing, but are actually making huge profits in what appears to be their hour of need. The lower interest rate offered, the gimmick interest rate, is the result of what the loan industry calls a buy-down. Home builders have done it for years, and now the automobile business has joined the game. The average dealer profit with options, such as radios, radial tires on a car, is about 20%. The manufacturer is making another 10%. The actual profit on a $12,000 car loaded with extras is as much as $3,500, leaving the dealer and manufacturer a lot of room to play with your mind. Here's how the buy-down works. To qualify, you must make a 20% down payment and can finance your car for only two years. With cash or trade-in, you put up $2,400, leaving a balance of $9,600 to be financed. Let's say the bank or finance company has agreed to finance all of the sales this month at 11%, but the dealer is offering 5% to you. The dealer and the manufacturer, therefore, must pay the 6% difference themselves. That means they are buying down the interest rate from 11% to 5%. How much does it really cost them? The total interest on a two-year loan at $9,600 at 11% is $1,138. But the 6% paid by the seller is only $621. You are told your monthly payments for two years with a 20%, $2,400 down payment and an interest rate of 5% will be $517. And the dealer pays 6 elevenths, or as we said, $621. By spending just $621 out of the total potential profit of $3,500, the car dealer and the manufacturer have lured you into believing you got the deal of a lifetime. After all, the dealer is paying 50% of the interest cost. Your strategy? Never buy any car just because of the rebate or the low interest. It's not that big a deal. Now, let's take a look at options. Options for a car dealer are where the dealer makes the highest percentage of profit and you overpay for what you get. Some options, like undercoating, are even worthless. Strategy, don't fall for the undercoating trick. One of a hundred options you'll be offered when buying a new car is undercoating. As in all scams, the premise makes total sense. You don't want the bottom of your automobile to rust out and one day the bottom of your car falls out so that you're sitting lower than the center of your wheels. 
Well, you wonder, is the manufacturer that stupid that they don't think of that in advance? But then, if the dealer says, it's a must, who are you to quibble with the experts? You find that the dealer offers you three undercoating options, super, deluxe, and total protection. Super is an extra $125, the deluxe $200, and the super deluxe may be as much as $500. How can you go wrong? After all, you can add it to the price of your car, which of course can be financed. Say yes, and you're ripped off again. First of all, the undercarriage of the car is usually painted with a rust-proof material, which is all most cars will ever need. If you live on the coast near salt water or in a far northern city that replaces the ice on streets in the wintertime with salt, you may need some extra protection. But only if you intend keeping your car five years or longer. The body rusts out long before the undercarriage of your car. Even under the worst of conditions, the bottom of your car would not even begin to rust out for at least five years. Years ago, I hired a man named John Bond to run my printing and publishing company in Manassas, Virginia. At one point in his career, John had actually worked for a very, quote, reputable car dealer in the Washington, D.C. area. He was their undercoating specialist, meaning that John's job was to spray the additional undercoating on the endless number of cars whose new owners had purchased the option with pride. John told me the story of the real difference in the super, super deluxe, and total protection options. Well, John began to explain. On the super undercoating, I stood under the automobile with a can of pressurized spray paint and carefully coated all the exposed metal right over the coating the dealer had already put on. However, if the customer ordered the deluxe undercoating, I sprayed the undercarriage of the car wall standing on one foot. The total protection undercoating process was much more complicated. He said, I stood under the car on one foot and whistled Dixie while spraying the car undercarriage. Get the point? The point is, undercoating protection, like so many other options, is a total waste of your money. Strategy. Don't fall for the inflated dealer setup and preparation charges. On every new car sticker, you'll find a dealer setup and preparation charge, which is supposedly the cost of the dealer of getting the car ready to sell after transport from the manufacturer. The charge can run as high as $800, leading you to believe that the car must arrive at the dealers in pieces. In truth, the car was thoroughly checked out for defects by the manufacturer, and any damage en route is paid for by the trucking company. The dealer's actual prep time and expense is usually limited to, limited to an on-the-premises car wash. And you've been ripped off for hundreds of dollars of work and costs that never happen. How much should the preparation charge actually be? Why, nothing. Have you ever paid a dealer's prep charge when you buy a VCR washing machine or kitchen table? I hope not. In addition to some of these extra charges, you'll also find an extra sticker now on most new cars. You have the manufacturer's suggested retail, retail sticker, and then next to it, now you'll see the dealer's add-on charges. All of the dealer's add-on charges are not manufacturer's charges. They are absolute rip-offs and just a way that the dealer is increasing the price of the car. Visit a few dealerships. You'll be shocked when you see these extra stickers. Never pay the amount on the extra sticker. Let's look at some of the trade-in tricks. Car dealers hate trade-ins. They're a nuisance and require the dealer to either resell the car on his used car lot or dump it at the car auction at a rock-bottom price. Either way, it's going to cost the dealer plenty of money to take your old clunker as a trade-in, and he's going to get it out of your pocket one way or another. One reason why the manufacturers and the dealer sticker prices are marked up so unreasonably high is to allow the salesman to offer you what seems to be a good trade-in on your car while making the offer only with funny money built into that inflated price you're being quoted. Another way the salesman plays gotcha is to get your mind off the amount of the trade-in by showing you how much lower your payments will be by letting go of your old car. Your payments would have been $280 a month, he says. That is without the trade-in, but by giving you X dollars for your old car, we can get them down to just 210 
just what you told me you could afford to pay. All you're ever getting for a trade-in is auction price minus about the $600 that dealer knows he's going to have to spend. The dealer knows within a few dollars how much your car is worth at the next auction, but wants at least $600 just for handling it. You'll always be told, however, that because there's a current demand for your type of car, you're getting absolutely top dollar. The salesman's job is then to make you think that you and he put one over on his boss by getting such a high trade-in allowance. You start feeling good while you are actually getting clobbered. Strategy. Never get your car loan from the car dealer. Oh, I know it's convenient. You can sit right there at the dealership and after you've purchased a car, you walk into the closing room and they handle your loan for you right on the spot. Well, the dealer says that they're, in char that they're in touch with all banks and they can give you the best interest rate around. The truth is, you're being charged 1 to 3 percent more for interest than you would have to pay the bank directly. How does this happen? The banks actually make offers to car dealers that they will finance a certain amount of the car dealer's inventory when purchased by uh, car new car owners at a specific interest rate, let's say 11. With all the add-ons, by the time that you get the loan through the dealer, you're paying 13 to 13 and a half. But because we make the mistake of only asking, what are my monthly payments and what's my down payment, we fall for this trick every time. The most important thing is what are your total payments? And if you want the lowest total payment, strategy. Always get a car loan approved before you go to a dealer. Go into your bank or credit union or wherever you want to finance the car and you get approved for a certain amount of car, $10,000, $15,000, $20,000, whatever range you're going to be buying. Then you walk into the dealership head held high already knowing you have the loan. You're getting the bank's bottom line rate, the same rate approximately the dealer would get and you're not paying inflated interest charges. These interest charges can cost you hundreds of dollars over time. Strategy. Don't fall for the required periodic maintenance trick. One of the biggest tricks by car dealers today is to get you to have to bring your car in every few thousand miles for servicing. Oh sure, it's under warranty, you're told, but you have to pay for oil changes and other things the dealer does. Every time you bring your car into the dealer for, quote, required maintenance, you end up spending $50 to $100. This is on a warrantied car. And uh, the dealer's rates now are anywhere between $40 and $70 an hour for repair work. These are the guys who are repairing your car that the dealer is paying $12 to $15 an hour to. No wonder dealers want you to bring your car into them for service. What should you do when your oil needs changed? Go to Jiffy Lube. Spend 10 to $15 for the same thing that would cost you four times as much at the dealers. And they can usually do the other required checkups. Before you buy a car, check the warranty to see whether it's required that you bring the car back to that dealer or only that you have the required maintenance done. Your warranty is not worth much if it requires that that dealer you buy the car from does all the maintenance work. Strategy. Never buy extended warranties. Extended warranties are nothing more than a form of insurance. What extended warranties actually do is ensure that the car dealer, appliance dealer, and electronic dealers make the highest possible profit at your expense. Often, you're convinced to buy an extended warranty by the $30 to $60 per hour repair charge you might have to pay without the warranty. The per hour repair price is often inflated by the dealer just to scare you into buying the warranty. If your car breaks down, you can get it fixed for far less somewhere else. What can you do instead of buy the extended warranty? The best way to get your car fixed is never to pay a repair shop 30 to 50 to 70 dollars an hour for the repairs, but to hire one of the guys that works in the repair shop who moonlights to come over to your house or take your car to his home and fix it. He has no overhead and will usually charge seven to ten dollars an hour, a fraction of what you're paying the car dealer for the same person to do the work. Credit life and disability insurance are the kinds of insurance lenders try to push on you 
anytime you're borrowing money for a car. Let's say you're financing your car at the dealership or the bank. The last question the loan officer will always ask before approving your loan is, oh, by the way, you do want the credit life and disability insurance, don't you? What's that, you ask? This is great stuff, he replies. Pays off your loan if anything happens to you. Well, it sounds so logical until you learn that if you say yes, like eight out of 10 borrowers do, you are overpaying for the insurance you get by as much as 800%. Up to 60% of the huge, huge premiums go as a commission to the car dealer or bank. That should tell you what the insurance is really worth. So the next time you're out there bo borrowing money and somebody says you do want the credit life insurance, your answer is an absolute no. That one word will save you $1,000 in payments every time you buy a car or borrow $10,000 for any reason. And what about car leasing? That's a question I've always asked. Well, car leasing is nothing more than buying an automobile but paying only a portion of the principal during the lease. The way a lease works is the person issuing the lease actually figures out how much your car will be worth approximately at the end of the lease, whether it's three, four, or five years. During the lease period, instead of paying interest plus all of the principal, so your car is paid off at the end of the term, you pay only a portion of the principal, and then you usually have a buyout price at the end of the lease. It's no different than buying a car except for one thing. If you lease for five years, you're stuck with that lease. If you were to call the leasing company and say, look, let me out, I want to get rid of this lemon, the leasing company after about three years would say, sure, just bring a check for $5,000 cash and we'll let you out of the lease. Same problem as we talked about before with buying a car. So when you lease, you are absolutely stuck with that car. Now, when you do lease, or if you do lease, make sure it's for no more than three years and uh, be willing to be stuck with that car for a three-year period. In addition, make sure that the leasing company gives you in writing the lease rate stated as an annual percentage rate. At first they'll tell you they won't do it because it's a lease that has no interest. That's just a lie. Every loan has interest. If they won't give you the rate, then they're ripping you off. That's the only reason why they won't give it to you. And if they put it in writing and you later find out they're charging you too much, you can get your money back. I have seen young people be taken for as much as 21 to 23 percent per year loans because they leased and all they asked are, what is my down payment and what are my monthly payments? These strategies will allow you to save $100,000 during your lifetime on the money you spend on automobiles. I'm Charles J. Gibbons.